This video is about more learning about C++, and specifically, we're going to learn about the the IO stream library and uh, input output in C++. So there's a lot to go over here. We're going to go through it a little bit quickly with this example. Um, and if it's going a little bit quick, remember that everything here is covered by the written notes as well for your reference. This program totally works. Um, there's no problem with the program as we have it written now, but it's using the C standard IO functions. Um, and in C++, they made a new library that you can use called uh, IO stream. So I'll go ahead and include it. Notice that it doesn't start with C. That's kind of an indication that it's just really a C++ library. And it allows us to do some input and output uh, a little bit more simply. So let's see how it works. Uh, first of all, instead of printf, we're going to use, uh, yes, yeah, so and I need to, I forgot to say using namespace scd. Okay, so instead of printf, we use cout. So cout is kind of like the name of the standard output stream. And when we want to print something, we use this uh, less than less than sign, which is called the stream insertion operator. Uh, so think of it as like we're sending this thing, we're sending it to C out to the standard out. So C out is like standard out, and this is how we print something. We don't have to flush because it's gonna get automatically flushed when we read in the next thing. And how do we read in is, well, we don't use C out, we use C in, like standard in. And uh, we just say that. So we say the name of the variable that we're reading into, and notice that the arrows point the other way for C in. Okay, we'll deal with uh, we'll deal with everything else later, but let's just make sure that this works first of all. Um, so yeah, that compiled, uh, and now we want to just kind of use these operators throughout the rest of it. So what do we use instead of f open? Well, we need to make a new stream. It's going to have the same kind of type like c in would. And so the type is called if stream. Think of it as input file stream. That's what it stands for. So I'll call it f in. And I can say f in dot open f name. I don't have to specify r because I've already said from the type that it's an input stream. Um, so that's just kind of implied. Also, notice that we in we kind of hinted that one of the features of C++ is that we can have functions inside of structs, not just data. And this is an example of one. So think of fn as some kind of struct. We didn't create it. That's created by the people who wrote the IO stream library. But it has this uh, function called open that's defined inside that struct to open a file. But then the way that we use it is really the same. So we can in particular use this like uh, not like put it in an if statement to check if it opened correctly, and that will work exactly the same. Um, so now this is all good, and our scanf here is gonna be different. So one thing that's a little bit different with uh, scanf versus um, cin or fin is that we can't specify like these, like the dollar sign or the dot explicitly. We actually have to read it in as a char. So I usually will call that like trash. So we're gonna just read in some trash. And so what's the reading in that we wanna do? Instead of this f scanf, we wanna do f in arrow arrow. So we're using f in just like how we used c in. And then we just put in a line all of the things that we're reading into. So we're gonna read, first of all, uh, the dollar sign. So that's trash. Then I'll read in a number, so that's just the dollar number. Then I'll read in the decimal point, which is another just character that I'm gonna throw away, and then the cent value. So that's the f in command that will do the same thing as this f scan f. Take a second to check, about, check out what's going on here because it's very different, it's very exciting. Uh, one of the exciting things is that even though we have to have this trash variable for like the dollar sign and the dot, that's maybe annoying. One of the cool things is that we don't have to specify like percent D percent D. And if you think about it, it was a little bit silly that we had to do that before in C because 
It's like, we already know that dollar is an int. Why do I have to specify again that it's an int? Um, and there's all kinds of weirdness, like if I tried to use percent %g here, but this was an int, it would compile, I should get a warning, but something uh, kind of strange and, and bad would happen. And in C++, you're kind of saved from that badness because it just you just say, hey, I'm reading into this int. Because it's an int, then fn is going to know how to do that, and it's just going to read into that automatically, read into this other int. Uh, we don't have to use address of or anything. We just say it just like this. And uh, in order to put this in a while loop, we just surround that whole thing with a while. What happens is that every time we do this operator, it returns the stream itself. So like we do fn error error trash that returns, that reads in to that char and then returns fn again. Then it reads into the dollar and then returns fn again and et cetera and et cetera. And then what happens is that if we try to read something in and it doesn't work, then it's going to set that stream to an error and this will um, evaluate as false. So this will just kind of evaluate as false when we reach the end of the file. So just like here, we have to check that it actually read in two things. Um, for fn and the IO stream, we can just put that whole thing in a if statement or a while statement. So this is gonna to read to the end of file, read until end of file. And now the logic here of assigning it to the struct will be exactly the same. Um, this will be exactly the same, and I'm just going to change my printf. So remember, printf to print to the standard output stream is C out, and I face the arrows the other way. It's an easy mistake to make, but output, you're always facing the arrows to the left. Input, you're always facing the arrows to the right. And then I just have to put each part. So rather than making one string, which like contains everything and has these percent %d stuff, um, I just put each part. So like total colon space uh, and a dollar sign, then uh, total dot dollars. And again, C out knows how to write this in. I don't have to specify this in it because that's already the type. And then a single dot and then total dot sense. And then I can put a new line here like this, but it's more common in C++ to put endl. Um, endl means the new line end flush the output stream. So it's just a little bit more common to see that. So the endl is the same as just writing the new line. Okay, and I think with that, we should have converted everything up. I have to fix this one too. So this is just printing out a single string. So it's gonna be C out like that. Okay, so I think I've now purged the program of all, <laughs> nope, no, 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 I have one more. Um, this error message here is gonna be C out, and then I have, I have to kind of do it from left to right. So I'm gonna have everything with that quotation mark, then the file name, then the closing single quote, and a new line like this. So that'll give the same output as that one. Okay, so now everything is using C in, C out, F in, F out, and should be all good. Let's try it. Okay, I made a mistake. So this is a strange kind of error, but when you see something like incomplete type, that usually means you forgot a header file. And indeed, I forgot a header file. So if I use IOStream, this gives me C in and C out. But if I want to use also like um, uh, files that I open, like like if stream, then I also have to say include F stream for like IF stream. And you can imagine there's also an OF stream to make an output file. So that, yeah, this is a case of a not super helpful error message, but if you see this, that means you forgot to include fstream. So this seems to work now, stacks.txt, and almost one small problem is that it doesn't print out nicely with the leading zero here. Um, and there is a way to do this in C++, as you might've guessed. Uh, we could have an if statement, like if the sense is less than, 10, then print a zero, and otherwise not. Um, that would be one way to do that. There is a kind of nice way to do it, but it's a little bit more verbose than in C. So we have to say include IO manip, 
So more header files. Um, this is going to give us the set width and uh, set fill. Oh, it's just fill. So we're going to set the width of how much we want to print out and what it what the width should be filled with. So we're going to set the width to two and fill it with a character of zero. And it's kind of strange syntax, but we just put these manipulator things right in the stream like this with more of the less and less than operators. And they just affect the next number that gets printed out. Um, so it's a little bit strange because these things won't actually call something new to be printed. They just affect the next thing that's printed. Um, and again, you can do the same thing with if statements if you don't like using s, set w, and fill. But this should work. <sighs> Exciting. Okay, I think it's actually set fill. So it says there's no mashing uh, function for this fill. I think it's set fill. Cool. One of the things that you'll see with C++ is like it can be very nice when you get it to work, but the error messages you get can be absolutely horrible. Um, because it's such a more powerful language, it tries harder and, and see it, it says, oh, I have these candidates. Maybe you meant this. Maybe you meant this. Um, so in C, a lot of times if we don't get it to compile, uh, then we get an error message which tells us pretty closely to what we need to do. In C++, it's much more common that the error messages can be a little longer and confusing. And really, the trick is to look at the first error message, and the beginning of it is just telling us, hey, you, there's no function called this. Um, you probably meant something else. And indeed, we did. We meant set fill. So now if I run my program, and it should give me 545.03. Awesome. So there's one more cool thing that we can do, which hopefully you maybe are guessing. It's the combination of this new input-output streams and the operator overloading that we already learned about. Can you guess what it is? It is that we can replace all this and actually teach the compiler how to print out our type. Remember, amount is our type, our struct that we made up that has dollars and cents. We can teach the compiler how to write that out. Um, so what is this going to look like? So define how to print out an amount. It's going to be the return type is an OStream reference. So there has to be references that show up here. Um, remember, reference types are kind of like pointers, but we get to treat them like their values. So it's going to be the less than less than operator for C out or for any other output stream. And it's going to take the output stream, whatever we're writing to, which could be C out or it could be some like file, and an amount. Okay, so this is going to be the function that we need to define to teach C how to print out an amount. The syntax is a little bit crazy here. So if this is, if you're like, what the hell is going on? Um, totally reasonable response. The main thing is that anytime we want to teach the compiler how to print out a new type, all this is going to look the same. All that'll change is the type of what you're printing out. So if you had your own struct over here, like a point struct or something else, that would just be uh, changing this and the O stream parts will stay exactly the same. And then when we write this, we just say how to print it out. Um, just using out and not C out because here out stands for like, it could be a file output, it could be C out, could be C error, which is like standard error, the error output stream could be anything. Uh, so I'm gonna do this same kind of printing, but instead of total, it's gonna be A. So print out the dollar amounts, uh, dot, oh, I should print out probably the dollar sign as well. Um, the dollar amounts, and then the what we want, and then I have to return it. You always have to return that output stream after you print it. And so now, all of this complicated stuff that was in main, I can just replace it with, I just want to print out this total amount of money and leave it all in this special function to tell how exactly that monetary amount should be printed. Very powerful idea, um, very cool stuff, and I made a typo. I forgot to replace that one with A. So there we go. 
Great, compiles. And it works, 545.03. So what did we learn here was quite a bit. So we have uh, standard in and standard out become uh, C in and C out. And then F print, uh, print F and scan F replace with the uh, these operators. Um, so we don't even explicitly call a function. We just use these operators when we're in C++. Um, what else did we learn about? We learned about like instead of F open, that uh, instead of calling F open, we're going to use the ifstream.open or ofstream.open. And we can, and the new thing that we can't, couldn't do before, we can't teach printf how to print out our own types. Um, but if we overload like these stream operators, then we can teach C++ how to read in or print out our new types, which is a really cool thing. Again, kind of one of the ideas of C++ is that you can make your own types and treat them in your program just like you would treat a double or an int um, by custom defining how everything should work underneath.